our service this morning, brought to you by the Horwich and Rivington team of churches. We really hope you are well. Well, here we are, Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. Lent has gone really quickly for me this time. I don't know about you. Perhaps we're just all really desperate to get to Easter. Our reading this morning is from Mark 11, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? <clears throat> they answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, there was a party atmosphere as Jesus entered Jerusalem and many acts of generosity from the crowd. The cloaks that were laid on the road had a much greater value than the coats that we wear today. The palm branches had value too. They were cut to celebrate the festival of the booths. The Jewish people observed this time by building and dwelling in temporary shelters, just like the Hebrew people did while wandering in the desert on the way to the promised land. This joyous celebration is a reminder of God's deliverance, protection, provision and faithfulness. A booth or tabernacle was this temporary building covered in undergrowth and palm leaves. So here was a great generosity in the giving of the cloaks and the palm leaves to line the way of Jesus on his donkey. Palm leaves that were meant to keep these booths warm and dry. Mark 14 verse 7 says, You always have the poor with you. Jesus was clear on that. Mark 10 verse 25 tells us, Giving riches away was necessary to enter the kingdom of God. In the 17th century, spiritual guides recommended a state of mediocrity being, between being too rich to rely on God and too poor to be honest. Our own attitudes to the inequalities of poverty and wealth are probably more curious. Let us pray. Lord, let us come with enthusiasm to meet you today. Let us pour out our love and our praise and bring the best we can offer to our generous God. Amen. As I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you'd like to respond with hear our prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you this morning to offer you our praise and worship, to learn more about you.
bring our prayers before you. And to share fellowship with one another. On this Palm Sunday, we think of your triumphant entry into Jerusalem after spending 40 days in the desert being tempted. Lord, help us to realise what you did for us as we journey in Holy Week towards that glorious Easter Sunday morning. We pray, Lord, for our church here in the Horwich and Rivington team and across the nation and across your world, Lord. Strengthen us with your spirit and guide us as we seek to reach out to more people that they may know more of you. We pray, Lord, for the clergy, the wardens, those who lead us in our churches here. We pray that our churches might reach out to our local communities and serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, we bring before you all those who have been affected by COVID-19 and all those who still are affected by it. In this week when we've paused to remember the anniversary of the first lockdown coming into effect, we remember all those who have lost their lives. The bereaved, those who've been ill or still ill with the virus, those whose lives have been turned upside down by it. And we pray, Lord, that as we come out of lockdown and measures and restrictions are eased, that people will continue to be sensible, to follow the rules, so that this virus can be brought under control. We pray for the vaccination programme. And we pray that it might spread successfully throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we bring before you all those who are sick and those who look after them. The bereaved and broken hearted. The housebound and lonely. The unemployed and homeless. Those who don't know where their next meal is coming from or where they're going to shelter tonight. Those with difficult family relationships. Those who are in desperate situations. And all who need your tender hand on them now. We think of all those across the world who suffer as a result of civil wars, natural disasters, all those who are living in desperately awful situations that we can only imagine.
We pray too for those who are persecuted for knowing you as Lord and Saviour. Let each of us now bring before you a person or a situation known to us in need of your love at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as we enter into Holy Week, and on Palm Sunday, we heard in the reading how people greeted Jesus as their king as he entered Jerusalem on a donkey. Let us greet you as king in our lives and welcome you into every part of it, Lord. Help us to live as you would want, to do your will. And as we approach Good Friday, and we think of your death on the cross, and three days later, your glorious ascension that all might be complete and our sins might be forgiven so that we, confessing you as Lord, might bring you into our lives knowing that we might have eternal life with you in heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the glory, the power are yours, now and forever. Amen. May I speak and share in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Not long after I was ordained, I took a funeral where the weather was so atrocious, it felt like it was actually raining horizontally. I was extremely cold and wet by the time I left the graveside. Following this, I was given a piece of advice. You need a cloak, that'll keep you dry. So that's what I did. I ordered a cloak and it arrived. And yes, it keeps me dry and it definitely keeps me warm. But when I put it on, I'm uncomfortable. I feel, I feel its weight around my shoulders. And as I take it off afterwards, it always feels quite liberating. When one of my children was quite small, he used to love dressing up. And I lost count of how many versions of cloaks that I made for him. He wore them everywhere. He never wanted to let them go. I used to have to prise them off him or wait until he'd gone to sleep before I could wash them. And trust me, when I say it, they got really quite grubby. Jesus was travelling with his disciples, making his way to Jerusalem. In John's account, we're told that Jesus finds a young donkey, a colt, and he sat on it. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever ridden a donkey or watched someone ride one. It really isn't a symbol of power. The donkey was a symbol of humility and of peace. It showed that Jesus was going to be a different kind of Messiah than the people were expecting. Jesus didn't want any confusion about the message he was going to be bringing when he arrived in Jerusalem. He was not a typical triumphant Roman king. He was bringing a message of peace. He wasn't coming to Jerusalem that day to meet expectations. He was coming to meet needs. As Jesus was approaching, the people were waving palm branches 
and throwing their cloaks down and spreading them over the road. The image of palm branches being waved is the one that we have in our minds when we think about Palm Sunday. Those palm branches, those cries of Hosanna, which means save us. The disciples were the first ones to throw their cloaks on the road before Jesus. Others saw the act and they started to lay theirs down as well. And so the road we picture as being filled up with palm branches and cloaks. People following the crowd, getting carried away in the moment. But to throw your cloak down on the ground was a sign of homage, of submission, to lay down oneself. They hoped this king would be able to bring deliverance. While the people were unhappy under Roman rule, they were willing to submit to Jesus. They hoped he would be their new ruler, a ruler to bring them freedom and liberation. When we see Jesus in Jerusalem, and we think about those who were laying down their cloaks. Do you imagine yourself in that crowd as well? Do you imagine yourself doing the same? When those cloaks are laid down, what we really lay down is what we think we know about who Jesus is. We lay down our ideas about him in homage and submission. That's what some of those people were doing in the streets of Jerusalem. They were laying down their hopes and their expectations that's what we're called to do today. Now, it's no secret that disagreements happen in the church. Disagreements happen in all walks of life. We've all got different ideas about who the person of Jesus was and is. What it is that he cares about. What kind of life he's calling us towards. But fundamentally, we believe that Jesus came to forgive our sins. And he calls us to lead our lives following his example. Some people interpret this as living a life of devotion and of holy living. Others say Jesus came as a radical revolutionary who challenges us today to be calling out injustices and working through political systems to right the wrongs. It's easy for us to become sidetracked though by our own ideas and our own ideals. Those are the times where we allow our vision of God to become narrow. The times that we forget when God is so much bigger and more awe-inspiring than anything that we could possibly even begin to imagine. This is a story that leaves us visualising ourselves in the crowd. We're cheering, but what would you be cheering about? Do we anticipate liberation from corruption? Are we cheering because everyone else is? Do we cheer because of the imminent arrival of Jesus? Or is it because of hope? Hope for a better future. That moment that we catch that first glimpse of Jesus, our grasp tightens around our cloaks. We might not want to let go. We don't want to lay down those cloaks before Jesus. We don't want to let go of what we think about Jesus, about what we hope to be true about Jesus who is the Messiah and yet as we see Jesus passing us by we see his face as he's riding on that donkey and somehow we find ourselves loosening the grip releasing the cloak letting go it's then when we let go of all that we think we know about Jesus about who he is and what he's calling us to do it's only then that we'll be able to be freed up enough to let him fully into our lives. The place where he becomes the king of our hearts and our minds. The place where his control is ultimate. We've given up everything just for Jesus. If we're grasping onto our thoughts and our ideas about God, then we're never going to be open or in a position to receive what God has got to give us. But if we can just loosen our grip, if we can let those go, or even just hold them lightly, then we will be more open to the movements of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When Jesus came into Jerusalem that day, he came and he turned everything upside down. This upside down kingdom began because that's what it's like with Jesus. The first is last and the last is first and the meek will inherit the earth and tears will be turned to laughter. 
because it's once we recognize that as we let go of the control in our lives then we're freed that's when we're liberated and that's when we start to find out what god and jesus has in store for us the creator of the universe became a man he dwelt among us and then entered jerusalem riding on the back of a donkey Paul talks about this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus gave up the rights and the privileges and all that came with being God to become fully human. And fully human meant that he would die. But God had so much more in store. Those people who were welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem had no idea what the next few days would bring. But we're told that they were laying their cloaks down out of respect. And as we enter this holiest of weeks, that's what we're called to do. To lay down our cloaks. When we cloak something, we hide behind it. We cloak ourselves to conceal our vulnerabilities, brokenness, pain. When we lay that down, we allow God to enter into the very places that we would try and avoid. We reveal just how God can transform healing, life, love, restoration and salvation because every time we cloak or we cover up and hide our vulnerabilities, the tender and broken or painful places of our lives, that's when we deny Jesus that triumphal entry. We've all done it. We've covered something up. We've pretended not to deal with it. We've chosen to hold on to it, not to let the healing in because of fear anger, guilt, regret, control, power, sorrow, prejudice, pride, the need for approval. That list just goes on and on. We make those excuses. We could all add to the list. The cloak we wear, the times we wear it. And at times we wear more than one cloak. But every cloak that we wear separates us from God, from each other, from ourselves. The triumph about Palm Sunday is not about us waving palm branches for Jesus or even about Jesus as he rides into Jerusalem. The real triumph of Palm Sunday is when we throw down our cloaks before him. Those cloaks are the path of Jesus' triumphal entry into our lives. The deepest, the darkest, the scariest, the ugliest parts of our lives and we allow him to become king. The triumph of Palm Sunday is when we stand vulnerable, exposed to the triumphal entry of God's love. Cloaks, they tend to go with us wherever we go. Are we prepared to leave them here today? To throw them down before God? Scattered on the floor? At the feet of Christ? Surely we want to feel the joy that the disciples felt on that day. Surely we want to lay them down and never pick them up again. To be liberated by that life-giving healing. The cloak I wear at funerals, the one I'm always glad to take off. I take it off, that's the weight of the burden we carry. The cloak which my little boy loved to wear, that's the burden we don't want to let go of. And so as we begin Holy Week, glance ahead at what lies in store. Stop and pause at the foot of the cross. Ask yourself what cloak you have and then make the choice to let it go. But once you've let go of that cloak, don't go back to pick it up again. Leave it there. Today is the time to choose. Are you waving palms and shouting Hosanna and just hoping and wishing for a better future? Are you going to be throwing down those cloaks and welcoming in the upside down kingdom of God that Jesus revealed to each one of us? Let's pray.
Lord, as Jesus entered Jerusalem, let him enter our lives. Let the King of glory come in. Let him rule in our hearts and in our lives. Let us offer love and our lives to him. Through the same Jesus who offered his life for us and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And so as we go into this week, we go knowing that we go with God's blessing on our lives, on the lives of those that we touch, that we share our lives with. And so the love of the Father enfold you, the love of the Saviour uphold you, the love of the Spirit guide you, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and forever. Amen. Thank you.